Tiny House Dreaming here. I'm at home in Raleigh, North Carolina. Got here yesterday. Had to rest and run around and buy groceries and stuff. But I am at the mall. See, Macy's is behind me. This is my first time going to a mall here. I think this is the Crab Tree Mall. So I'm excited about going in here and I need to buy a watch. So let the search begin. I really want a Swatch watch, but I don't want to order it off of the Swatch website because I won't be home when it's delivered. But you can create your own on the Swatch website. And there is no Swatch stores anywhere in North Carolina. That kind of sucks. So I'm hoping I'll find a Swatch retailer in this mall. But if not, just a cute watch for 2019. Wish me luck. I'm going to try to make some videos while I'm home. Like tomorrow I go get my Diva cut, get my curls cut. Uh, maybe I can make a little clip there. My mirror got hit. I didn't ever tell you guys, but it got hit like at the beginning of February at a truck stop. Somebody hit me. Anybody that follows me on Instagram knows this already, but I waited till I got home so I didn't lose any days um, waiting for my, I have to be quiet now, any days waiting for my mirror part to come in. So I figured it was better if I did it once I got home. So I'm going to drop my truck off either tomorrow or Friday. It's Wednesday today. Um, so I can make a clip there. But yeah, I'll talk to you guys the, while I'm home. I'm going to be here until Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So plenty of time to maybe show you guys around Raleigh as I explore myself. But I'll talk to you later. Okay, so I'm at another mall. Didn't find a watch I found a couple things though, like I got something for Forever 21 and what else? I can't remember what else. Oh, and I found a brand that I really like called Rip and Dip. I was in Zoomies, um, which you guys probably know what Zoomies is, but it's a store with like different kind of smaller, I don't know if I would call them urban brands, but like different brands. It's kind of skateboardy. I don't know. I used to go there in California all the time and buy the I Love Boobies um, bracelets to support breast cancer. When I worked at the hospital, I would wear a different color all the time, every day. Um, but there's a brand called Rip and Dip that has this cat as the, um, the like, what do you call it? Like the logo or whatever for the brand. Really cute. I'm trying to talk myself into spending $40 for some kitty sandals because you guys know I'm cheap but I really like the brand so discovered a new brand today but now I'm in I think this is Triangle Square Mall still looking for a watch and still just looking for anything cool I already see something I like penguin shirt cute and look let me hey Stewie's hanging out with me talk to you guys later good morning guys it's thursday i'm in my little bathroom and i am about to be going to get my hair cut for the first time in like two years i mean i trim it myself but i haven't been in, gotten it cut by somebody else so i'm kind of nervous and eh. it's a diva cut i don't know if any of you guys have heard of that it's like they cut it kind of curl by curl when it's dry instead of like getting it wet and like cutting it even like that because you know curly girls when our hair dries up it shrinks up I mean you guys seen the picture of how long my hair is when it's straight it shrinks up because it curls up and the curls have a mind of their own each curl does what it wants to do so some curls will shrink up a lot some curls will shrink up a little and so they do it dry so they can kind of shape your curls to however you want it to be shaped um, and you'll see how it is going to be dry. Then they wash it and everything and then they let it dry again. So you see the final product. My hair right now is all over the place. Like I have curls that shrink up to here. I have curls that stay kind of long in the back and they, they're just everywhere. So I'm hoping that they can do something for my hair. And it's like when your hair gets too long, or something it when your hair is trying to curl up it like weighs it down and I think that's what's happening to my hair too it's like it's getting too long to where it's weighing the curls underneath down so when it's drying it can't they can't fully curl up because like the hair on top 
is getting too heavy and it's kind of just pressing them down or something. I don't know. I'm hoping it works out though. I'm excited. Don't know this person that's going to be cutting my hair. So dark in here. Yeah, it's so dark in here. But I'm going to try to film it while I'm getting it done. Just in case anybody out there with curly hair that watches me is interested in what a diva cut is like. And the, to make it a person that knows how to do a diva cut, they have to actually go to the Diva Shawn Salon in New York City and take a few, um, a few classes. So... Um, and it's like so many hours and they get certified to be able, it's like a level one, level two, and level three. And you want like a level two or three. If you're, this is my messy room. Say hi to Stewie. Hi Stewie. I still haven't like gotten my room together. So yeah, but, um, okay. So hopefully everything goes okay. I will see you guys along the way. Okay, so I have been to the hair place, got my hair cut. Can't really, I mean, you could tell it's shorter, I guess. But um, she did it and dried it and all that. And I had to go home and do it my own way. So it's still kind of wet from me going home and redoing it. But it's cut. Um, I took the truck to the Freightliner. They're going to fix the mirror. It's there right now. Coming over here to PF Chang's to get something to eat while I wait for them to call me and let me know my mirror got fixed. Um, and I'm back at the, actually at the first mall I was at yesterday, Crabtree. I'm parked outside because the P.F. Chang enters from outside versus inside of the mall. But I'm excited to like see my final hair product or the outcome, not product. The outcome of it once it fully dries. But she did cut quite a bit off which is good because it was kind of just it needed to be something to happen to it but i'm going up in here i will talk to y'all later so i'm at the freight liner of raleigh i dropped my truck off earlier and i'm sitting here i went and had lunch at pf chains i think i took a video of that but i'm just sitting here it's where is she? He, my right down, I'm oh, here. I can't what see the. I can't see the then door from my phone from where I'm sitting. But he should be done in a little that. bit. Is that what I'll and do? Like minus off inventory it'll be a brand new and mirror. I'm excited to see that. him. But I waited till I came home to get it done, so I didn't lose any downtime. I think that was a pretty smart decision because somebody. Um, another crime driver, he got his mirror hit in Connecticut, and he sat at a freight liner in Connecticut for like four days while the part was ordered, and you're not making any money when you're just sitting, so when he told me that, I said, oh, I got to figure out something, I don't want to just be sitting, so this was my thought, to wait till I got home, since I'll be here for a week, I figured that was ample time for them to order the part and get it put on, and everything worked out good, so... I'm just waiting for that phone call that two tanks is all better. Talk to you guys later. Waiting, it should be not too long before my mirror's all fixed on two tanks and I can take them home. And I was able to, I figured out like, last time I was home, there's a street that, let me sit down. There's a street right behind um, where I'm, I live at that I was like, this is wide enough where I might be able to get away with parking two tanks on the side of the street. So when I came home this time, I went ahead and tried it. It was completely out of hours, so I went like negative 20-something minutes on my clock to get home. Don't tell nobody. But um, but it worked out perfectly. So two tanks sits right there. I can just literally walk right there from the house. It's so nice. So... When we're done, I'm going to just take him right back home. I don't have to, like, last time I came home, mm, they have complimentary beverage and snacks. That's nice. Last time I came home, which was obviously when we moved out here and the first time, me being out here as, like, a resident, um, I parked my truck at, uh, it's either a Pilot or a Flying J off the 95 exit 75, and that's, like... 35, 40 miles from where I live. Um, and that was the closest truck stop. There's one little truck stop that has like five spots, but it's always full. So that's the closest real truck stop that I would have been able to always find a spot no matter what time I came home. 
Um, so I thought that that would like be my normal where I park at all the time. But luckily this street that's behind my house is big enough and I'm able to put two tanks there. So now I can, I'm just like literally right there. I don't have to have my mom come meet me at a truck stop to bring me home and all of that crap. I mean, and it's just nice to have your truck right close to you. So like you can go out and start it every couple of days. Cause I think um, my kind of plan will be for at this point, when I come home, stay home for a seven day week, stay out on the road for six weeks, come home for a week, stay out on the road for six weeks. I'm going to try to keep that schedule. The only reason I'll have to like come home in between or kind of throw that schedule off is there's like something going on, like where my mom needs me to come home or I have some type of appointment where I need to come home. But that probably won't be that often. So my schedule will be six weeks out, one week home, six weeks out. And that's kind of cool. So it'll be nice to have the truck close by. At this point, I'm just rambling. So I'm sitting in this big old room by myself. Maybe I can turn the TV on. I don't really want to watch anything. I don't have enough battery to go live or I would have got on Instagram maybe. I'm tired to go live because there's a few people not doing anything right this moment. But I have like 20 something percent. So I don't know. But I'll talk to you guys later. Howdy, everybody. Happy Monday. It's Monday. I'm going to probably be home um, till Wednesday morning, like early Wednesday morning. I'll let my dispatcher know I'm available. But I am here at the Tangier Outlets in, oh my god, I'm trying to see if I see the sign in the back. I had to pause my camera. I got a phone call. But yeah, I don't know what, it starts with an M, whatever city I'm in. I don't even want to try to say it. But I'm looking for a Columbia outlet to try to buy another fleece. Um, I've been wanting to come here for the last few days, but have just made it here. My little Stewie bun is at home with my mom. That's what I call Stewie. He's my Stewie bun, like a cinnamon bun, but so much sweeter. But um, quite a bit off. Oh, here we are. I'm gonna pause. I'll come back to you guys. everybody tiny house dreaming here so it's thursday um the last day of february the 28th um by february come on in march but um i am back on the road now i left home this morning about i got my load about 10 o'clock this morning um I picked up in Concord, Concord, North Carolina. And the only reason I remember that so easily is because there was a Concord, California, kind of close to where I lived in California. So it was a familiar named city. Um, and I am taking this load to somewhere I can't pronounce in Wisconsin. It's a weird sounding name that I can't even try to think of right now. But when I called in my live load, I remember struggling trying to say the name and the person on the other end of the line knew what I was talking about and pronounced the name of the city but I can't remember it but um Walmart to Walmart basically but I just came in to check in I don't I think the last check-in I did with you guys here's two tanks still dirty <laughs> still dirty I um don't think it's snowing in Wisconsin but it's like minus 13 so I'm kind of trying to get the right time to um get a truck wash because i don't want to like go back into bad weather or like raininess where it's gonna just get dirty again because that's kind of like a waste of 40 bucks which is about what it costs at a blue beacon if i remember correctly i usually get it at the terminal but i'm not gonna be going through a terminal anytime soon i don't think so I don't really want to waste money if it's going to just get dirty in like two, three days. I like it to stay clean for at least a week. Like, give me my money's worth. Now, if I'm spending $10 at a terminal, I really don't mind. And every time I pull through a terminal, I always get the truck washed. But when I'm paying more than $10, because I'm used to $10, paying $10, it's like $40 and $45 seem like so much. So I'm like, eh. But anyways, I think the last check-in I did was when I was at Freightliner. And... 
I had to come back for a part in like on Tuesday. Well, I went back on Tuesday and I noticed that they didn't replace the whole thing. Like here, let me see if I can show you guys. They didn't replace the whole casing or whatever. So before when he, see this was the part that he was trying to put on or that I went back on Tuesday that they were ordering. But then I noticed this right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of like bent. The case part is bent. So before I had them put the thing on, I was like, well, wait a minute. Cause I, when I called before I ever got home, me and, and it was a whole ordeal with this, but Raleigh Freightliner ended up being really good about it. Um, David from the parts department helped me out. He got parts overnight and obviously he didn't order the right thing. But my, me and my road assist advisor had been working on getting me into Freightliner at the beginning of February. And they were supposed to order the whole case because, you know, like the girl hit me. So I don't want like to only fix certain parts because it's not coming out of my pocket. I want it fixed like new because it was brand new when I got it. I mean, not brand new, but, you know, like I hadn't hit anything. So when I realized that they didn't fix the case, I went back in and I was like, well, I would prefer you order the case because if there's something after you guys do everything, if I can still see dings or dents or something, when I turn my truck in as a lease driver, Prime's going to charge me for that because they want their truck back. I mean, it was almost a brand new truck when I got it. They want their truck back in new condition and anything that's not new on it or that's messed up, they're going to charge the driver. Um, and I don't want to get charged when she hit me. Like if we charging her company now for it, then I need you to fix it and make it like it was before. So they're going to order. There's only three whole cases. Like I'm saying a case like the mirror casing or whatever. I don't know what it's really called. There's only three in the whole world right now. And they had to order from like some far away place. And I found this out on Tuesday because that was when I kind of realized that they didn't replace the whole thing. I guess I should have looked better or whatever. I don't know. My bad, but then also their bad because I've been working on this since the beginning of February to have them order the parts. So when I got there, the parts were already there. So whoever was talking to me and to the road assist guy, they didn't at order what we asked them to order. But I should have looked at it better when I was there on Thursday to notice it then. But even if I would have noticed it on Thursday, she said it would take like two or three weeks. I don't have time to sit around and wait at home. So obviously I'm getting back on the road. I have the mirror part so I can see. Um, and I'm just gonna keep pushing. She's gonna email me when the part comes in. But I found all this out on Tuesday when I went to take it back. So she'll email me when the part comes in and I'll swing by the house, which kind of works out. Cause on Friday, I went to the DMV in North in Raleigh and I switched my license over and I have this funky, like they took my plastic license, which I really was like, oh my gosh, I hope it doesn't cause me a problem. Cause a lot of, especially Walmarts, they ask for your ID. And this Walmart that I picked up this load from didn't. So that was kind of lucky, but I don't know if I'm going to be so lucky. Cause like when I walked in a bank in Raleigh to take um, money out, when I went inside, the lady refused to give me money. I mean, luckily I can go to the ATM, but she refused to give me money based on the little paper copy that they give you. Cause she's like, well, it says on there that it's a receipt only and blah, blah, blah. But the DMV lady, I asked to keep my hard copy of my ID from California, but she said that they have, like, you have to surrender it. So I didn't have a choice. I tried, but, um, she said that people should t accept this, you know, and she said in 15 days it'll come. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm a truck driver. I'm not going to just be sitting at home every day to check the mail, but I will swing back through Raleigh. Hopefully I will be able to get my license and, um, get the part fixed. So I'm going to wait till I get the email that the parts ready and, then by then my license should have came because I did that on Friday. So it's already been like four business days at this point. She said 15, but somebody told me that it never takes like the full 15. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I was home like, man, nine, nine nights, 10 days if you count this morning. But like this morning to me doesn't really count because I left, um, I left early this morning kind of 10 o'clock I don't know wasn't that early but early enough where I didn't get to enjoy the day in Raleigh 
but I'm still loving it. I went to like some different malls. I think I did clips there. I didn't do a clip. I don't believe at the outlets. Like I drove 45 miles outside. Why can't I think of the name of this place? M M Ugh, I don't know. It starts with an M and it's outlets. Um, so I got some cool stuff from Columbia outlet that was on sale because you know it's the winter's about to be over it's like I got some hoodies and some breakaway pants and stuff and then I got some very comfortable sweats from the champion or Hanes store that sells champion oh my gosh this was my first pair of champion sweats and they feel so well I actually got two pair of gray and a black because they were on sale you know I'm cheap so I still look for sales even though I be making money I like it to sit in my bank account and I'm cheap still. Yeah, I think I always be cheap, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. But yeah, it was a good trip home. My mom got a new dog. His name is Bambi. And he's super skittish. So like <laughs> Stewie was terrorizing him. He's skittish with me. Um, the people she got him, like she adopted him from a rescue. But they said that he was like locked in a crate and he was the smallest one of his litter. So even to eat and stuff, his brothers and sisters, I think it was brothers. His brothers used to kind of like overpower him and take his food. And then the people that had him before the rescue place got him, they used to keep all of them, him and his, I think that he was in the rescue with two of his brothers. They would keep them locked in crates like all day, all night, like just locked in a crate. So he's not a really social. And he like clung to my mom cause she got him while I was out on the truck. So um, I'll put a picture of him right here since there's like a little empty space. Um, so he's he started coming around towards the end but he's still not fully comfortable with me and definitely not with Stewie cause Stewie was just like running and ripping and running around the house as he's used to. And Bambi was just like, who is this dog and why are they in my house? So, but after a few times of going home, it'll, you know, he'll get used to both of us. Um, he got started getting more used to me than he did Stewie, but he's super cute. So I'm glad and my mom loves him and he loves my mom. So I'm glad that they're happy together. Um, uh, what else did I do while I was home? I didn't do as much as I wanted to. I really wanted to like go to different trails and to go to downtown Raleigh and go through some of the, um, the, um, museums and stuff. Uh, but that'll be on my bucket list for next time because it was just so rainy like you know I wanted to take Stewie on different trails and stuff but even like the day after and even like two days after it rained my arm is hurting I'm not used to holding the camera this long two days after it rained it um the ground is still soggy because it's so like woody around so it's just like, you know, and his, his little feet, he's a prima donna. He's like, what are you talking about going on a muddy trail? So I want to just wait. Maybe next time I go home, it'll be a little bit nicer where stuff will be dry. But that I definitely want to do. And there's so many museums and there's like a park. Once it gets, I wouldn't have did this this time. But once it gets nice outside, there's a, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of the name. I can't think of the name. People from the area probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But there's a park that has a lake like lake I don't want to say Lake Harrison I don't know I'll get back to you guys when I actually do it but you can rent kayaks for like three or five dollars or something and kayak around the lake so I definitely want to do that that's on my to-do list you know obviously once the weather is nice enough where you're on the lake and enjoying the like sunshine but um I don't know what else I did I had a lot of relaxation caught up on sleep caught up on TV and yeah, and now I'm just taking my 30 minute break. And where am I at? I am somewhere in Virginia at, uh, well, you can see, at a rest stop. Um, taking my 30 minute break. I'm like 950 miles from Wisconsin and it's due between 12.01 a.m. this tomorrow morning, Friday morning, and midnight Friday, mor Friday night. So I'm going to stop yipping and yapping because I'm going to get Stewie, take him for a walk real quick, and then my 30 minutes should be up. I hope everybody's having a great Thursday, and I'll probably check in with you guys maybe when I get to Wisconsin. Peace.
everybody. Well, I arrived in Wisconsin last night. Well, yesterday evening, actually. Um, I dropped my load at a Walmart distribution center. The guys were really nice. It was so bad, the snow and stuff um, on the highway, like for like the last 20 miles before I got to my receiver. Like it was so bad that I couldn't pull over. My windshield wipers froze straight so they weren't like wiping anything. And um, man, it was just bad. But they let me drop my trailer. It was like a dropping hook. So I dropped my loaded trailer, which I was gonna do anyways, but they let me bobtail out so it would be easier to find parking. And then just come pick up an empty in the morning, which is what I did. So I got a load. Um, I'm actually here in Milwaukee. That's where I'm at right now, picking up my load that's gonna take me to, I forget the city name in Missouri, but somewhere in Missouri, Mo, Mulbane or something, Missouri, and it's due early Monday morning. But I'm here at the shipping and receiving, so I'm gonna check in and I will talk to you guys later. That sucks, my trailer is not ready yet. It's gonna be like I'm dropping an empty here. And it's a meat load and I'm picking up a loaded trailer but it's not ready yet he said for me to drop my trailer and go park in the corner they'll call me I'm like 15 minutes from the dead time on my appointment it was between 7 a.m. and 1400 and it's like 1 47 p.m. here in Milwaukee and I've kind of learned with meat loads that for the most part they are not ready on the early end of your window it's always the later end of your window so I um, slept in this morning and really I just wanted because the weather's bad but although it hasn't been snowing today while I've been driving but I wanted to kind of drive in the in the Sun not Sun the daylight I didn't want to drive in the dark the end of my drive last night was in the dark and it sucked I broke <laughs> broke my um windshield wiper on the driver's side because I had to if any drivers out there you probably seen those little $3.99 or $5.99 they're little squeegees that you can like use for your mirrors or whatever they're a lot shorter than the ones that are in the buckets at the truck stops the fuel island I have one of those in my driver's side uh what's it called the little thing on the door the little cabinet contraption thing and so I used that and I rolled the window down because I couldn't see to pull over. Like you couldn't see the lines in the road. You couldn't tell if it was like grass on the side or what was happening. So I rolled the window down as I was getting off the exit and I kind of like let my windshield wiper hit it to try to break the ice that was keeping it stiff because I couldn't, it wasn't wiping anything and I accidentally broke it. So I had to put on a windshield wiper this morning. So I wanted to wait till the light to do all that stuff. Oh. And look at two tanks, it's clean. I got him a bath on the way here because I had to rinse out the trailer. And he's all nice and shiny. And I got him a Rain-X coat. We'll see how that works. That's the first time I've done that. But anyways, I got to go down there, drop my empty, and sit and wait. So I'll talk to you guys later. Happy Saturday. light bulb while I sit here at the shippers so let's see the best way to get this I'm just gonna try to share with you for anybody who hasn't changed can you see that I can't see what you're looking at maybe you can see that I pulled the thing off and see the light in it you have to pull it out this is what the replacements look like on these the old trucks too because I actually got this bulb when I had my company truck for free from Prime. Thank you Prime! They didn't ask for them back. Like you get your supplies as a company driver like oil and windshield wiper fluid and they gave me two of these in a Ziploc bag and they fit this truck. I actually had to replace my other side, my passenger side. This is my driver's side and I went and spent $22 at a Petro I think for one of these until I looked through my bag like after that not looking for these but for something else oh for the little packets of 
um, fifth wheel grease and I was like, hey, these are the same freaking number that I just spent $22 on. So I got two of these. I'm gonna use one, I'm gonna still have one left, but I was trying to show you, but I can't really see where I'm pointing the camera over there, but that's the compartment. Let me see. Yes, that's the compartment. See, this is a compartment closer. This one. But that, and this is like for your blinky. Let me see. Actually, what would that be for? I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. This is right here. I don't know. But when I did the other one, I'm kind of a little experienced now. That's the one. It's in a plug. Let's see if I can pull it out and show you guys. Okay, I can't do this one handed. I'll be back, guys. Okay, so you twist it. Like when this is how it's in, when you guys saw it, it sticks in like this with the light actually in the compartment that's on the other side. You have to twist it and these grooves will allow you to pull it out once you twist it past the groove. And then this little red piece up here, gosh, this is so hard like holding the thing, but you see this little red, it's like a little red thing on the top. You push it down and then you have to use your finger to kind of push the little piece up it took me the longest the first time I did it because I was like why is this not unsnapping but you have to actually put your fingernail down in it and move this little red piece so it kind of goes on the other side of there's like a little hook thing and then it just pops right out so I'm gonna put you guys down and I'm gonna do that so guys I'm sitting here like I said I had the bobtail over here and I'm just sitting in the corner and the nice guy that's sitting next to me waiting for his um, load. Look, Stewie is sitting in the window just, he's shaking, he's shaking, he's cold. But really what he is excited about is the guy, I guess he had maybe some damaged pallets or something. So he just gave me two boxes of apples. Like they're the um, pre-packaged, like kind that you put in your kids' lunches, little apple bites. So that was really nice of him. I'm just sharing that somebody actually did something nice and gave me some. So I'm going to definitely put these to use. And Stewie actually likes um, sliced apples as well. So he's over there and he's kind of excited. Thanks, guy in the KOLM truck. I already told him thank you, but just saying thank you on camera. Bye, guys. Talk to you next load. Well, I'm here picking up a load. So I will talk to you guys along the way, I guess. Bye-bye.